Hi, it's Karen Berniston here at the CHA Mega Show 2016, introducing my brand new Pop It Ups products. And the one I'm going to show you today is just a quick demo of how the new cup pop stand die works. So this is how it's going to come packaged. It comes included with six different dies. I've got them here on the table and I'm going to show you how to put this thing together. Okay, let's start here. Let's look at the six dies that are included. This is a pop stand design. So what that means is you've got a die that cuts a couple tabs into the card at the location you need to pop up an object. So in this case, a cup. So this one is a little different than other pop stands because it's a little bigger. Usually the die is just the tabs themselves, but this time I wanted to add some score lines to create a look of a saucer underneath the cup. So that's why this is a little bit bigger die and it even has some decorative flourishes in it. If you were to emboss that die before you took it off of the paper, you would actually get those embossed flourishes into your saucer. But with all Pop It Up dies, they have the alignment nubs on the side and that is how you're able to line it up in the fold of any size card. Now I'm going to do something a little different today because I'm going to just do a small saucer for the cup. So I'm going to actually make an insert for my card. I've started with a piece of our new core card stock. That's a very pretty light gray color. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to line up those alignment nubs on the die right over the fold of the card. So I'm just going to center that. Now I could use a temporary low tack tape to hold that down and that's probably a good idea so that it doesn't move. But since I don't have any right here, I'm going to just go ahead and do it and risk it. Let me put my machine together here. Okay, so let's just run that through a die cutting machine and it doesn't matter what machine you use just as long as it can accommodate a wafer thin die just with your wafer thin sandwich and roll that through. Now here's what that die has done. It has cut these little tabs to animate the coffee cup but it's also, I'm not sure you can see them, it's scored a little line around the, the tabs that make it look like a saucer. And then included in the die set is a half circle die so that that's wider than those score lines so that you actually can turn this into a plate. And I'm going to just go ahead and fold it in half so that I can cut through both sides at once. I'll make sure that that's centered around my score lines and I'll run that through my machine. Try not to let it move. I really do wish I had my tape, but that's okay. It's okay, it'll make it work. Not bad. Okay, now here what I have. I have my plate, I have my tabs, and I'm ready to put that in a card and animate it. Okay, what size card? Doesn't matter. I've done a long A2 here. Now one thing about pop stand dies is you want that card to open up all the way flat for display. And when you have a long fold that you're trying to attach inside a long fold, it becomes very difficult to open it all the way flat. So for these type of cards, if you're gonna do this, I suggest one fold, just one fold, and you can pick. I could either cut this in half, glue one to this side and one to that side, or I could even just cut this in half and meet them at the fold. And that's what I'm gonna do for this card. Is so I'm gonna take my insert piece here, and I'm just actually gonna cut right up that center line so that it's two pieces instead of one piece and I will just meet them in the fold of the card. That way there'll be no resistance in the fold and it will open all the way flat. Let me use my Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive tape. It's nice and strong. I'll add some of that to the back. I love that I can tear it. So I'm working pretty quickly here. Probably if you were at home making this card, you might take a little bit more time with your adhesive to put it on out towards the edges and make sure you have it all covered. But we're just trying to get it on here for our demo today. 
and we'll meet that in the fold of the card across from the other one. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. You can fold that all the way down flat, but there isn't any resistance. It'll fold easily all the way up to 180 degrees. Okay, what are gonna go on these tabs? We're gonna make some cups. You always need two when you're making a pop stand design. This is a nice open die, so it will easily cut through two layers at once. So I'm gonna just get two pieces of cardstock out there. Maybe not cut that die at the same time. Another little tip, especially when you're cutting intricate dies or multiples is to try and send your die through at an angle through the machines or vertical, much better than horizontal. You get much better pressure in your rollers that way. Okay, now I have my two cups. What's gonna happen is one's going to attach to the front tab, one's gonna attach to the back tab, and then they will attach to each other. So these are really, really simple cards to make, but so dynamic. Everybody loves to get a pop-up card. It's like a little bit of magic in a card. Okay, let me pull that in so it doesn't come off. Now, I always think the easiest is to lay the item flat and fold the tab over onto the back of the item. That's just the easiest way to get it attached. And on the back, I'm gonna do this. Oops, I gotta make sure that my handle goes in the same direction or it'll look weird. Okay, that's all there is to it. There's just two pieces there. All we need to do is attach those up at the top to each other. Since we wanna add a little piece of steam, we'll probably just use a little bit of tape, maybe the thinnest Elizabeth Craft Designs double-sided adhesive tape. Can find the end. And we'll just do it kinda of in the corners, leaving ourselves space in the middle. other. And there you have a cool little pop-up cup card. So it'll fold down flat, it'll fold all the way up. Another great accessory I kind of already told you about, two other, three other pieces that come with the die. And there's a spoon, there's some nice large coffee beans, and there's a piece of a, a rising steam. So you see the steam can come up and out of the coffee cup. And you can imagine how those are used. I won't die cut them. But let's talk about some of the accessory dies and items that come in the collection that are going to coordinate perfectly with this. We've got brand new stencil. So this is the coffee stencil. And the way this one was designed, you can see the coffee beans up here. Those will give you an all-over bean pattern. Let me find a sample here using that. Here's a good example of that bean pattern. But what's nice about this particular stencil, if I can pick it up, is it repeats in all four directions. So you can see that there's kind of coffee bean holes right here. Those correspond to those, and the same thing on this side. These kind of line up with those holes so that you can expand this in all directions by simply moving the stencil. And these little line of flourishes here work great right across the coffee cup to give it that china look. And then as you can imagine, the same flourish here done in a semicircle so that you can do the same thing on the saucer. So let me give an example of that. <laughs> That's not the right one. Here's a good example of that. So you can see the stencil used across that and then that same stencil used down here. And then here's all the beans in the background. Now you see those little greetings, but first coffee. There's a great new coffee clear stamp set and tea, coffee and tea. I don't mean to mean it, leave out the tea. It's got just a small little set of clear stamps. It's got lots of fun greetings that will go with the cup pop stand to do either coffee or tea cards. And then let's just look at a few other items. Oh, and I should not forget the coffee bean embossing folder. So that's another new product that coordinates. You can see it in the background of this card by Kelly Booth. But this is a really great card right here. Let's look at this card by Kelly because she's showing how you can use the coffee cup die even when you're not using it for a pop-up. You can just use it flat. Like she stacked a couple here and made this fun coffee card. Use the coffee bean embossing folder and the coffee and tea clear stamps for this card. And that's just a flat card front. So you'll see inside it's actually not a pop-up. These are great for flat cards as well. Here's one that's T. This one's by Karen Aiken. You can see she's used the clear stamps on the front, just saying. And she's made a cup pop stand that says T solves everything. So that's a great use of it. I love this one by Kelly. She made it into a little shaker card there. So she used the cup pop die or to cut the hole out of the front, backed it with acetate, put it on foam squares, and then she filled it with confetti. Here's another one by Kelly where she used paste, texture paste through the new stencils. 
covered the coffee cup. She also used coffee bean stencil in the background here, coffee salts, everything. I agree. I agree. This is another way to use the stamps. You, me, and, and there's the little coffee um, cup <laughs> on the stamp set, and then coffee salts, everything, just saying. The spoon works great out of shimmer sheets as well. Okay, so that is the new cup pop stand. I've lost it. Uh, die set. It will be available very soon. They're already shipping to independent stores in your area. You can go to elizabethcraftdesigns.com to look at all the new products in the pop-it-ups line. And I'll see you later.